Hi, everyone. Welcome to our 13th family meeting. Uh, we have a full agenda today, a summer school, class schedule, calendar, grading policy regents and some requirements, what you need to know for next year. Uh, and I also realized that we might have some incoming families joining us. So welcome to your first family meeting. We're gonna start with summer school. So the last day of school is June 25th. We're gonna be running cell at 10 a.m. Uh, now some students have already started um, their summer school work and are completing summer school classes right now. Uh, those are the students who are coming in daily and making up any of the NX work. Um, they will continue through the summer, but again, we wanted to get everyone started as early as possible. So there's less to do over the summer. Also in the summer, um, we're gonna be at Park West and the teachers are not from UAG. Um, they're teachers from all over. And so we felt like if we can get students started right now with their teachers, there's a much more likelihood for success over the summer. So you will get your summer school schedule um, on Friday and you will know if you haven't already, most of you already have from your guidance counselor. Um, and we're also excited that we're running a CT scholars program um, for our uh, summer enrichment. And we have a lot of kids who are involved in that. So next up, uh, class schedule for next year. So this is super important because it's very different from what you're used to this year. Uh, this year you were getting out of school at like 1.30. So why don't you take a moment and look at this bell schedule. You start school at 8.20 and you end at 3.10. Yes, 8.20 to 3.10. That is much, much longer uh, than this school year. So please take note, 820, you gotta be in class uh, and class does not end till 310. So things to notice, um, gold is from 240 to 310. Uh, clubs don't start until 315. So clubs don't start until after gold. And something else to note is that your lunch is very early this year from 1046 to 1131, it's basically brunch. This is what the bell schedule will look like. I know you're, if you're new to Gateway, if you're an incoming freshman or a rising sophomore, you've never seen this, you're probably like, what is this? How will I ever figure out where to go? Um, for those of you who are gonna be juniors and seniors, you've seen this before, so this is pretty familiar. Uh, at Gateway, we have a rotating schedule. And the reason that we rotate our classes is we want to make sure the last period of the day, which is eighth period, is always different because that is the period that is linked to gold. Um, so it's actually not as complicated as it seems. You will get used to it very quickly, I promise. Like, for example, first period um, is always A, except on Mondays it's E. Second period is always B, except on Tuesdays it's E. Uh, so E is what we call our diagonal period. Again, don't worry about trying to figure this out right now if you're new to Gateway. Um, the things that you should know about this schedule is that every Monday is a Monday, every Tuesday is a Tuesday, every Wednesday is a Wednesday. We don't run uh, that weird schedule on Wednesdays like we did during COVID. Um, so it is pretty consistent and it does follow a pattern. Again, as I mentioned, lunch is fourth period. Uh, now, sophomores and freshmen have gym before lunch and juniors and seniors have gym after lunch. So that's something important to know. So I know you're getting all these like questions in your mind, like, wait, can I go out for lunch? Are there free periods? Why is lunch so early? What gym do I take? So I'm gonna go through a couple of these questions now. Uh, so a lot of kids are asking, why is lunch so early? We are in a shared campus, and so we want to be fair. Nobody wants to be the early lunch period, and so we switch every single year. So, um, you know, a year ago we had the 11.30 lunch, and now this year we're going to have to have the 10.45 lunch. Um, but next year we'll get the better lunch period again. So it's just a rotation. Can you go out during lunch? Usually the only students who are allowed to go out during lunch are seniors. However, um, because the cafeteria can get pretty crowded, we might allow juniors out for lunch this year as well. The good thing is for those of you who are 
incoming ninth graders and rising sophomores, there is a schoolyard. So even if you have to stay inside for lunch in the cafeteria, you can go out to the schoolyard and just hang out outside or play sports. Uh, lunch is free at Gateway, so you can get the lunch in the cafeteria and then go out um, into the yard, or you can bring your own lunch. Uh, what do kids usually do during lunch? So most kids will be playing video games or playing on their phones. Um, others are chatting, some are making up work, some are going to the library, um, some are going to meetings that they have. So there's lots of things happening during lunch. Uh, can I pick what gym I have? So yes, there are three options for gym. The first one is weight room, which is on the sixth floor. And that is what uh, you think of when you think of like a traditional gym with gym equipment and machines. Um, then there is gym, like a big gym, uh, gymnasium with basketball hoops and bleachers and that holds a lot more people. What they generally do in gym downstairs, it's in the basement, is they'll do um, some warm up exercises and some uh, stretches, some push ups, sit ups, um, some sprints. Um, so they do about a 15 minute warm up and then they switch to uh, a sport. So some um, some units are about basketball, sometimes it's volleyball, sometimes it's kickball. Uh, and then you clean up and head to your next class or lunch. And the third option for gym is our NJROTC program. Um, I know that if you were involved in it during remote learning, you might have been confused about how that would be turned into gym because it was a lot more academic. However, um, there is a physical education component to NJROTC. Uh, we often see them during their gym periods, doing tons of planks, tons of push-ups, tons of sit-ups. So uh, that is the other option. Uh, I got a lot of questions of, are there free periods? There are no free periods at UAG. There never have been, there never will be. Uh, there are no free periods. Your free period is lunch. Uh, even if you are a senior, you will have a full schedule. So uh, if you had that in your mind, like, oh, I took algebra in middle school, maybe I'll have a free period. No, you won't. So again, this is what the schedule looks like. I promise you will get used to it. Um, this is what we've used every other year and kids get used to it. So some other questions that might've come up. Um, and I think this is more about the adjustment. So do we still have classes twice a week? No, so now classes meet five times a week. I know you might've gotten used to having English only twice and having that day break in between to do work. That's no longer the case. Now classes are meeting every single day for 45 minutes, um, not twice a week for 90 minutes. Uh, is there still gonna be grade-wide class? So no, yes and no kind of, not all together. So our grade-wide classes had 100 plus kids in a zoo. We can't do 100 plus kids in a room. So you will still have the grade-wide class, but it'll be split. It won't be 100 kids at once. Um, so you'll all be in a separate classroom. Do we still have Wednesday gold days? No. So I know you got used to that Wednesday where we had the grade wide class and then we had gold all day. Um, that no longer exists. So Wednesday is just another part of the rotation day. Speaking of gold, um, a lot of you asked how gold will work once we're back in school. So when we were remote, we had gold after every period. Um, and gold after every period made sense because when we were remote, if you didn't have gold, you were just at home and you can take a break. However, during school, we have gold at the end of the day. Now, some of you might be wondering, wait a second, what is gold? If you're new to Gateway and you're an incoming freshman and did not come to orientation, that is probably what you're asking. The answer is gold is everything. Gold is everything. Gold is basically our tutoring program. Um, and it is during the school day, it's not an after school pro, uh, it's not an after school program. It's not optional either. Like a lot of times when you think of tutoring, it's more like, oh, I need extra help. I'm gonna go to tutoring. That is not what gold is. Gold is an opportunity for a teacher to identify students who are struggling and support them before too much time passes. So let's say on Monday, the last period of the day is A period. Let's say I have English. 
and my English teacher, Ms. Davenport, notices that I struggled with the essay we were writing. She's going to ask me on Monday. She'll come up to me and she'll say, hey, can you stay for gold today? Um, then she might notice someone else is struggling with the same thing. She'll come up to them and say, I need you to stay for gold today. Another teacher might do it differently. Uh, maybe the last period of the day on Monday for you is IT, right? And so the IT teacher might put on the board a, a list of names of students who are staying for gold. Um, and so at the end of the period, she'll put gold, write five names down. Um, and so then when the bell rings at 2.40, everybody else leaves and the students who are identified to stay for gold stay. Now, gold is meant to support you because the problem is if you don't understand today's lesson and then you come back to class tomorrow, you, you might really be confused. And so we make sure to have gold um, to support that learning. It's not about making up work. It's about supporting the learning that, that you're struggling with. Now, sometimes kids might want to stay for gold, right? And so you might see in the back of your classroom, there's like five kids doing work. Um, but then five kids in the front of the room working with the teacher. That's okay, because the teacher is holding gold only for four to five or six kids. There might be kids who want to stay in the back and finish work. They're doing that as like an independent goal. They're not working directly with the teacher. So again, gold is not optional. Now you're gonna ask, how do I know if my child has gold on a specific day? What if they're not asked to stay? Um, am I gonna get a schedule? So no, unfortunately you're not. Assume your child has gold daily. Teachers select students in the moment, right? Because it's a, it's a reactive response. We see um, that a child is struggling in the class and we need them to stay for gold that day. I don't know if your child's going to be struggling with certain content in two weeks, right? So I can't tell you that in advance. And gold is based on what students have trouble with that day um, or in that lesson or in that unit. So a teacher won't know in advance if your child is going to stay for gold. That is why I say assume your child has gold daily. Do not assume school ends at 240. It ends at 310. And that is when your child will leave the building. Now, yes, if someone does not have gold, they can leave and go home. So you might have um, your child come home or early. That is possible. Um, however, for the most part, kids don't leave if they don't have gold. They hang around and they wait for clubs um, since our clubs start at 315. Now, let's say your child came home and said, yeah, I had gold today. If you're ever wondering if your child did stay for gold for a specific day, you can always contact their teacher and ask. So again, this is this weekly schedule and I'm showing you kind of the difference between 9th and uh, 9th, 10th and 11th and 12th. So you can see what gold looks like and you can see what this gym period looks like. Um, so we have red and gray days. And so if you have red gym, then on a red day, you would have gym. If you have gray gym, on a gray day, you have gym and they alternate. So sometimes you have gym twice a week, sometimes you have it three times a week. Again, don't worry about nailing this down. I just want you to be exposed to it and see it, um, but you'll figure it out once you're in the building and, and doing it every single day. So next year's calendar. This is the DOE calendar for the 21-22 school year. Uh, you can find it online. There's a lot of dates on here because remember, it, it doesn't just include uh, high school, it includes elementary school dates, middle school dates. So there's a lot on here. I just want to pull out some of the important dates. So the first day of school, September 13th, parent-teacher conferences are November 10th and November 12th, and then the spring conferences are on the 16th and the 18th. Regions for high schools and for middle schools, uh, but mainly for high schools, the January regions are from the 25th to the 28th, and the June regions are from the 15th to the fourth, uh, 24th. So those are important dates to keep track of. Holiday breaks and days off are also important to keep track of. I'm not gonna read them off, but you can take a look at them. Um, I wanted to highlight these dates because we really wanna stress that if you're planning vacations or planning trips or planning anything, plan around these dates. Uh, it is so crucial that 
each and every child is in school every single day. Um, and so if you plan in advance, you can plan your vacations and trips on the days that they have off, as opposed to just picking a week in, in February. Um, there's a lot of instruction that we lost over this year plus during COVID. And so it's really, really crucial that kids are in the building every single day. So just wanted to highlight those dates so you can take a look and, and plan accordingly. So grading policy. Um, a lot of students this year got accustomed to handing in work nonstop, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., a month later, two months later, three months later, four months later, five months later. Some kids are handing it work in now. And so it's important to know what our grading policy is and how it actually functions in the classroom. So our grading policy is 70-20-10. 70 percent is summative. So this was the same thing as this year and every year before. Summatives are big unit tests, projects, essays. Um, and the reason that that's worth 70% is we want to align to what colleges are doing. A lot of times in colleges, you will have two or three tests and that's it, that's your entire grade. Um, this is a measure of what you know. And so that is why our summatives are worth 70%. 20% is formative. So this is like, um, a homework assignment, or maybe a small quiz, an exit ticket, a starter. Uh, formatives are not really about what you know. Uh, formatives are more about completing things and uh, the little tasks to lead to the big ones, um, to lead to the big summative. And so that is why they're only worth 20%. And then 10% is ABROWS, which a lot of people think of participation, but actually ABROWS um, stands for Academic Behaviors and Responsibilities of the Workspace. And so it could be participation, it could be punctuality, it could be collaboration. Um, it's a variety of factors and each teacher has a, a different thing that they do. So a lot of you are probably thinking the only thing that's important is the summatives. That is not true. If the only thing that you do in class is the summatives, the highest grade you can get is a 70. And that would mean you would get have to have 100 on every single summative. So I strongly urge you, do your formatives and your ABROWS. The other thing to note is summatives can always be made up and resubmitted up until the end of that marking period. So if you don't do well in a summative, you can re revise it. You can retake a test um, for a better grade. Because again, summative is, is, is a big bulk of your grade and it's supposed to reflect what you know. Formatives and ABROWS, you cannot be handing those in at the end of the marking period. If uh, there was a starter on September 14th um, and you missed that starter, there's no point for you to do that starter a month later because that starter was a formative to let the teacher know, do I know this or do I not? Um, so that is why I say do your formatives and ABROWS in the moment. As soon as the teacher assigns it, hand those in, complete the homeworks, uh, complete the quizzes, complete the tasks, because those are worth 30%. Um, and they will make the difference to you having a, a 65 in a class and a 90 in a class. And so that's really, really, really important. Now, a couple of questions that I've gotten is how many summatives are in a marking period? So at least two. Don't worry, it's not like you have one test in your entire grade uh, hinges on this one test. So every marking period, there's at least two summatives. Um, when is the last day I can turn in a summative? So you have until 11th hour gold ends for that marking period to turn in a summative. So it's not gonna be like this year where you're making up summatives in June from marking period one. Um, each marking period has a closeout date. And then the last week of the marking period is when we have 11th hour goal. During 11th hour goal, there's no new summatives assigned. You still have class and you still have formatives and ABROWS, but it's literally just about being held accountable for any of the work that you missed. So again, remember, summatives are not the only things that matter. So if you failed your unit test, can you retake it? Yes, absolutely. It's a summative speak to your teacher. You never submitted an, an essay. Can you still turn it in? Yes, it's a summative speak to your teacher. Um, I'm really not happy with my grade. Like I, I think I can do better. Can I revise this project or 
take some feedback and revise the essay? Absolutely, it's a summative, speak to your teacher. Now with formatives, that's a little different. Um, there might be a teacher or two that will accept formatives, but it depends. Um, so I always say, speak to your teacher. Uh, another thing to address is exams and graduation requirements for next year. So there will be regents next year. This is the chart that will show you what regents you have. So please take a moment, take a look at this chart. I know it's not exactly correct because you might notice, wait a second, I'm not taking living environment in ninth grade. Most kids in ninth grade will take living environment algebra. Most will take earth science and geometry in 10th. In 11th, they'll take chem and algebra too. But the important thing to note here is in the 10th grade, that is the year you take the most regents. So even if you're not in earth science and geometry, then you're in chemistry and algebra too. So 10th grade is a really important year for exams. 10th grade is also when you start taking DDA and IT certifications. Our software certification usually doesn't start till 11th grade. Something else that you might notice is the number of certifications. IT um, has a certification exam every year. DDA has it in 10th and 11th grade and software only has it one year. Now, obviously, if you failed the certification exam, you would retake it the next year. And then there's AP exams, and that, that depends on what AP classes you are taking. Uh, a question that I received is like, if I'm absent for a regents, can I just make it up on a different day? No, so regents have designated days, they're state exams. And so um, if you miss the regents in June, you're gonna have to take it next year. And these are graduation requirements. So you do have to take the regents. Now, some people might say, how many do I have to take? Well. At Gateway, we all graduate with advanced regents diplomas, so you're taking all of them. And especially if you want mastery in math or science, uh, you definitely need to take all of them. Can you retake a regents for a higher grade? Absolutely, and many of our students do. So now we're going to talk about next year and what we know so far. Um, I know it might seem like uh, we don't know much, but we do know a little enough to, to get us started for next year. We know that there's no remote option. Instruction is going to be back to normal. So there's no live streaming of classes. There's no Google Classroom. There's no videos of the lesson. Um, there's no Zoom to log into. It's back to good old UAG instruction. You're not going to need the computers to be uh, in class. Um, you don't need to bring your own computer. We have computers in the school. So whatever you need, we will give you. So again, really important. No remote option. You have to come to school. Um, in terms of vaccinations and health precautions, so there will still be safety precautions in place. We will still be wearing masks. We will still disinfect the space. We will still social distance. We'll still do random COVID testing. Um, of course, this might change come, you know, as we get closer to September, but this is what they're saying as of right now. No, all staff and all students have not been vaccinated. Some have, but not all. They have not required COVID vaccinations as of yet. Is there a chance that they could next year? Yes, of course. But this is what we know of right now. In terms of everything else, college trips, PSAL, clubs, all that, this will be coming back to normal. Um, it really depends on the activity, like college trips. Some colleges are requiring vaccination. So if a college requires a vaccination and you're not vaccinated, you can't visit that college, even on a trip. So there will be some shifts. Uh, PSAL sports and clubs will be coming back to normal 100% in person, just like school. Internships, it will depend on what internship you're a part of. Some companies are still remote. So if that's the case, then your internship might be remote. In terms of traditions and fun things we do at UAG, yes, we are starting those back up with some adjustments. We just had our amazing race, which was super fun. Uh, the, the old school way running around in the park. Um, trips, there will be some trips again with adjustments. Um, for example, like the international trip, I don't know if we'll be able to go to another country next year. Um, but as soon as we know, we're gonna update you. And of course, we're going to have to have some changes next year uh, to help prepare you for being back to school and to help with the transition. Um, you know, we're going to start having events in person for parents again. Um, but these family meetings online have been great. 
last night we held this meeting and over 200 parents showed up. And I don't think that would have happened had we had it at school. So there will be some things from remote learning that we will keep that were great successes and some that um, we won't and we're excited to go back to the, the old ways. Um, but you will learn all about this in the beginning of next year. Speaking of parents, I do just wanna give a plug. We are running our parent association election um, and we have multiple positions, president, treasurer, secretary. There's two positions for each. So we really want more parents as a part of the Parents Association, especially um, on the parent board. So if you're interested in running, um, please email our parent coordinator, Ms. Diaz, vdiaz at uagateway.org, or you can also email me. And you can also email us any questions. I'm sure you're gonna have a ton, especially from the incoming uh, freshman families. Uh, don't worry, incoming freshmen, uh, if you didn't come to our orientation, you will still get all the information that you need and we're calling to schedule home visits as we speak. Thank you again so much for joining me for our 13th family meeting. Uh, we will have a couple of these in the summer as more information comes up. See you soon. Bye everyone.